a vein-filled slab of rock discovered by Perseverance was already important evidence of water activity, but now the team has revealed that it's the strange spots in between the veins that make this the most important rock yet found in Jezero Crater on this episode of Mars Guy. The feature dubbed Bright Angel in the ancient river channel called Nemret Vivalis is proving to be a gold mine for understanding the geologic and aqueous history of Jezero Crater. Thanks to exploration by Perseverance, it's looking like the rocks of Bright Angel formed from mud deposited in water. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Perseverance drove to the edge of these rocks where they contact darker rocks carved by the ancient river that formed Nemret Vivalis. It's here that Perseverance observed tilted, thinly layered rocks with veins that parallel the layers of first in Jezero Crater. As I presented in three previous episodes, this strange-looking vein-filled slab and the adjacent darker, coarser-grained rocks were the focus of the team's attention for nearly three weeks. Perseverance drove away without coring a sample or even abrading a spot in the veins for a better look but it returned a week later and completed both activities, then took a selfie with the Watson camera out on the end of its two meter long robotic arm. If it's possible for a rover to feel triumphant, that's the look of Perseverance perched over its accomplishment. Perseverance completed this activity just in time for a major Mars conference that I attended this week. It was here that Ken Farley, the Perseverance project scientist, laid out the observations starting with one from the Sherlock instrument. As I've presented in previous episodes, Sherlock was plagued by a stuck dust cover that looked like it might bring an end to its investigative career. But the cover was ultimately successfully opened and has been left that way, allowing Sherlock to do its job, although with the risk of potential dust contamination. Sherlock used its Raman spectrometer on the vein-filled slab and got its first compelling detection of organics. A detection like this always comes with the caveat that organic molecules are in all life as we know it, but not only in living things. Plastic is just one good example of non-living organic matter. Measuring a good organic signal combined with other interesting features makes this rock especially interesting. Previously, I didn't discuss the strange spots in the reddish rock matrix between the veins because I didn't know what to make of them. They look remarkably similar to spots on a leopard, which is a good enough reason to dub them leopard spots. The reddish hue, which is distinct from previous rocks observed by Perseverance, is likely due to hematite, a mineral made of oxidized iron, a bit like rust. The arm-mounted pixel instrument has now shown that the dark halos around the spots contain iron and phosphate, and the lighter portions look like the iron has been reduced, meaning it's less oxidized. On Earth, reduction spots, or spheroids as they're named, can arise from the metabolic activity of microbes, which also can involve phosphorus. So the leopard spots could be the result of biologic activity in a watery environment billions of years ago. But the appearance of olivine crystals in the adjacent vein is inconsistent with a watery environment. Olivine is an igneous mineral from volcanic activity, which is hard to explain in a water-formed calcium sulfate vein. But in episode 170, I showed observations that make it pretty clear that olivine-rich material was deposited on top of the vein-filled rocks, so the olivine likely came after the veins were formed. I think the coarser-grained, darker rocks could represent surge deposits from an explosive volcanic eruption that blanketed the area. In this scenario, the question of whether such deposits could create the leopard spots has to be asked but examining the spots in labs back on Earth would be needed to definitively address the question of life. This is exactly the scenario that the Perseverance mission and Mars sample return was intended to address. It's just that no one imagined that a rock with organic matter and leopard spots would become the poster child for the entire endeavor. <laughs>